Welcome back to the Shop Mini RC, everybody. I'm Ken, and today we are looking at the new Furitech Unity. Boom. Whoa. There we go. Unity Pro. This is the 3500 KV. They also make a 2500 KV. This is set up for the TRX4M, or as you know, we can run it in the Ascent 18s. But this is a two-in-one combo. It's a motor ESC combo, and uh, it's going to be pretty cool. We've got uh, an adapter for your stock TRX4M batteries, and then a Red JST if you want to run those instead. Uh, we've got a Bluetooth or repeater module. They're calling this a repeater module, but it's basically the Bluetooth that lets you hook to the app on your phone. You can also calibrate this guy just through the remote. Uh, using basically button presses, but you use the throttle on the remote to set your things. We'll show that later. And then an on and off switch that you can kind of mount wherever. I kind of wish this on and off switch was removable, wish it was a plug or something that we could remove. Uh, so we were always on just, I like to do that. I like to have my stuff always on. Uh, I also sometimes don't want to have to mount a switch somewhere. So it's kind of annoying to have to do that. I'd rather just drop this guy in there and then use my battery plug as my on and off switch. Um, I guess we could just leave this on. This is better than like a push button, right? We can just leave this guy on and uh, then use our battery, but still extra wires if you didn't want it. I almost wonder if we can just solder the wires to cut it off and solder the wires together and it'd be always on. Probably, probably. Anyway, all right, so uh, the pinion is removable. So if you want to change out your pinion, you can. You've got your, uh, your shelf for your flat spot in your shaft there so you can put a different pinion on so that's cool let's go ahead and look at the specs on this guy so this guy is completely waterproof and dustproof which is freaking sweet it's the motor and the esc both waterproof right there in one package very awesome it's also got the foc technology just like all the other furitech stuff um, this one is a 5 amp bec and you can put it from 5.5 volts to 7.4 or 8.4 volts depending on uh your servo requirements and whatnot. It's also, like I said, got the separate power switch. We kind of wish it was removable, but it is what it is. And then obviously we've got the tuning app uh, that you can download for free on your iPhone or Android, which is awesome. It's a signature piece of fear tech stuff. It's one of the reasons I love fear tech stuff is just the ease of tunability. Uh, download the app. You can tune everything on the app and you don't have to like plug something in and unplug it generally. Now they have mentioned uh, with this pro, this is a prototype or early release version. Um, the Bluetooth module on this, they said, go ahead and use it to tune everything, but unplug it before we run it. They're going to do a couple updates to the firmware to let you leave it plugged in. But right now they suggest unplugging it. I'm not sure exactly why, but um, they have already done an update to the module itself. When you go into the app, you can see both the module and the ESC and you can update them independently, which is pretty cool as well. So they've already done an update on that. So maybe they fixed it already. Uh, we're going to run with it in. I'm not going to unplug it. We'll see what happens, but it should be good. But yeah, that's one of the things I really love about the FearTech stuff is being able to update things through the app without having to unplug or plug in a thing or reset the ESC. You basically can just tune it live uh, while you're driving. Not really, you don't want to do it while you're driving. Like don't be driving and then flip, <laughs> flip it to reverse or something like that. You can fry things, but like you can drive it, change some things, drive it some more, change some things, drive it some more. You don't have to basically reset the truck is my point. Very cool part of the FearTech systems. Now, as far as the motor in this guy is concerned, this one's a 3500 kV, 2 and 3S capable. They're supposed to be releasing a 2500 kV, which is 2 to 4S capable. So we'll see how that how that goes when that comes. It'll be cool if we get some 4S stuff right out the box like that. That'll be awesome. Um, there's not a lot of 4S options out there. So it'll be cool to have something that is 4S. Mind you, most guys running 4S are running high, high-end comp stuff, very high performance. I don't know if we're going to run this in a super high performance. Well, we're not. We're going to run it in this guy here. But um, I don't know if this will be used in a super high performance comp crawler just because you want to be able to kind of distribute where your weight is and things like that. But and we'll get into that later, the pros and cons of this type of motor setup. But 4S capable, we're on our way. That's freaking awesome. The motor is a 12 pole motor, so super smooth transitions and uh, basically as smooth as you can make your throttle. It should be able to be just as smooth. And then state of laminations, high uh, RPM ABEC bearings. Uh, it's got a precision balanced balanced rotor um, and then it's CNC obviously it's 6061 CNC billet aluminum which is good for the heat distribution so we'll see one of the concerns with a ESC motor combo is heat 
Um, but I highly doubt we're going to have heat issues here. Fear tech stuff doesn't usually get too, too hot. So, some of it does, but uh, it, even though it runs hot, that's just how some of it runs. But this guy should be fine. We'll see. We'll run it a bunch and then let you know if it gets too hot. Um, but yeah, we're excited to get in there. The ESC on this guy is a 30 amp, 50 amp burst. And then uh, it's got real time telemetry through the app and using the repeater module. It says up to 10 hertz. And yeah, like I said, all adjustable BEC and all that good stuff. It's, I believe it's basically like a, a Python Pro in there, which is gonna be nuts. Uh, and then this is basically a Cedar motor. So it's kind of crazy. Uh, let's look at the size of this thing. A lot of people are concerned about how big it is. So let's check that out. I'll go ahead and measure it here right off the bat for you. We're looking at 30, basically 36 millimeters, 35, 36 millimeters. Yeah, basically 36 millimeters, plus our wires coming out the back here. Um, if you look at the stock TRX-4M, that's basically the size of the motor inside this guy. So if I go ahead and measure that out to this little uh, the nipple, basically, the bushing or bearing hold. Yeah, we're right at 30, 35. And then if you include the wires, you know, the prongs from the wires, which we had to actually bend these down and fold them down uh, because of this brass bar here, you're basically at the same exact, same exact length. So same length as a stock motor. Now, one thing that does look smaller is the diameter. So if we look at the diameter here, we're at basically 18 millimeters in diameter, whereas this guy, 20 and a half or 20. So 20 millimeters on there. 20 versus 18. So you save two millimeters, which is nice. Oh, 17, hold on. Zero it out. Yeah, 18. 18 millimeters, 20 millimeters. Okay. So we're going to drop this guy right in here. Should be a perfect fit. It's going to be tight on that bar. We'll see. But it should be good. It should fit. And um, yeah, it should be exciting. A lot of people have wanted these two in ones, like the larger Hobby Wing Fusion. So it's cool to see that we're finally getting that in the small scale stuff. Um, another one of the concerns with a two-in-one is that if the motor goes out, you have to buy a whole new, the whole new thing. Or if the ESC goes out, you have to buy the whole, whole getup. But that's just one of the risks you take. And the fusion motor is super, super popular for tent scale. And it's the same thing, right? If the motor or the ESC go out in the fusion, well, you're buying a whole new setup. So it's just one of the risks you take, but there is definitely, uh, benefits to a two-in-one combo. You have a lot cleaner wiring. Uh, potential and then you have a lot less stuff inside the truck right you're just going to add a receiver especially with how smaller receivers are now basically you're just going to plug in the receiver and plug in your battery and go right simple as that so i'm excited to get this game here let's go ahead and do that and then we'll take it for a run so i'm just doing some quick cleaning up of wiring here um without having to cut things and and solder things and add new new uh, plugs. We just uh, wrap these guys up, heat it a little bit, get them coiled. And then you can get them nice and tight. And it helps kind of clean up the, the space just a little bit, right? There's a couple different ways to do it, but I like to do this. It's pretty easy. Don't melt your wires, but get them nice and warm, and then they should hold their, their coil pretty well. Okay, so we're going to go through and just kind of do that with, well, maybe not all of it, but some of it. We've also got lights in here, which is unfortunate. We're going to lose our lights because it's a Traxxas Pro Light kit. You know, Traxxas uh, likes to do Traxxas things. So if you don't have the stock ESC receiver combo, the Pro Light kits don't work. We're going to be using a FearTech Avatar. Um, but there is a couple people out there and one, one, I know for sure that makes an adapter for the pro light kits to use on your, uh, normal receiver. And they have a couple, couple different options. We might look at getting one of those for this guy, just so we can still use our lights. 
Uh, they're kind of pricey. I think they're like 35 to 55 bucks, depending on what setup you want. Uh, but you can just plug your pro lights into the adapter and then it, it kind of runs it from the remote or uses a light sensor. There's actually a light sensor. Anyway, um, maybe we'll look at that at some point. But for now, we're just going to have to do without our uh, lights. We'll these lights should still work, but the lights on the body are not going to work. So that's unfortunate. But we're going to get this cleaned up. we got our motor installed. Fits perfect in there. Look at that guy. Boom. Um, so that's cool. Oh, one note. The Red Cat comes with a transmitter that FureTech has a receiver for. So there is a combo where you can get the motor and a receiver for the Red Cat and use your stock remote on the Red Cat. Now you can't do that with the Traxxas because again, Traxxas does Traxxas things. But uh, if you have the Red Cat and you want to pick up the motor and use your stock transmitter or remote, you can still do that. It has one that comes with the receiver. So that's very cool. All right, we're going to clean this up. We'll be back. Alrighty, we're all wired up. Let's get our remote on. Go ahead and turn on our rig. And there we go. Pretty slick. All right, so I do want to go ahead and show you how to calibrate this thing and do all of the app stuff. Not all the app stuff, but I'll show you the app stuff. So here's the little information card it comes with shows you how to do your uh, throttle calibration whenever you put a new uh, ESC onto a new transmitter. You always want to calibrate that. You can also do it through the app. Uh, and then here are some of the basic settings you can change if you don't use the app. You can use the uh, you can change the direction from clockwise to counterclockwise. You also can set your drag brake from 0 to 25%, 50%, 75%, and 100% drag brake. Your low voltage cutoff, no low voltage. 2.5, 3, 3.2, and 3.5, and then your BEC output is 6 volts. Uh, I think on the website it said 6.5 or 5.5. Hmm, hold on, what did it say? 5.5 is what I read on the website, but this says 6, and then the 7.4 and the 8.4. All of your defaults are the starred ones here, so counterclockwise, zero drag brake, 3.2 low voltage, and 6 volt uh, BEC. So I'll go ahead and show you the beeps here. It's pretty simple. There's also this side. Okay. But as far as doing the settings through the beeps, again, super simple here. So I'll go ahead and turn this off. You're going to hold your trigger full, full throttle. Turn it on. You hear some beeps. Then you hear that. And then it's going to start beeping for you. Those beeps are going to tell you where you are in the chart. So beep, 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 beep is the first one, beep, beep is the second one. Okay, so that's where we are. If we pull the trigger or push the trigger forward, so basically go reverse. You have to hold it, but now you hear beep, beep. So direction and counter or clockwise. So if we hold it again. Beep, beep, beep. Okay, to go to the next one, which is drag brake, we'll go ahead and pull the trigger once. We'll hold it. And now you go to the second setting. So now it's beep, beep, beep. And we're gonna go ahead and put it on 75% drag brake. So we'll hold it. Hold it. Hold it. So, Beep, beep, is drag break, and then one, two, three, four, 75, okay? Go ahead and pull our trigger to go to the next one, low voltage cutoff, and we're gonna set that to three volts. One, two. One, two, three, three. And then our BEC output, we're going to put it at 7.4 because I think this enjoyer can do 7.4. It might even be able to do 8, but we'll just go to 7.4 here. So BEC is 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. So we'll hold the trigger, reverse, and now we're on 2. Easy as that. Okay, then you can go ahead and turn it off and turn it back on. And all your settings should be nice and saved. Okay. 
So let's go ahead and show you the app now. The app is way easy. So in the app here, we have two showing because one is our avatar, which is actually pretty cool. You can actually change settings in the avatar, change all your models, all that kind of stuff through the app here. Um, so that is a super cool feature of the avatar. It's Bluetooth enabled as well, which is pretty sweet. Um, so we'll go ahead and go into this here. And the first things you're going to see are your all your running information. But here, let's start here, clicking the up in here. You can see our device information. We've got our repeater, and then we've got our Unity Pro. Uh, you can disconnect. It shows us our hardware, our firmware for both. Go ahead and click on the settings up here. You can see update firmware for the repeater, which we've already done. And then you can also update your firmware for the ESC, which there hasn't been an update yet because it's brand new. Um, then you can change your password. And usually the default, if for some reason you have a default password, is 1234. Um, they have you put a password on there just so that other people don't connect to your rig while you're running on accident or even on purpose and mess with it. Uh, your temperature configuration here, your Bluetooth name, you can change the name of the Bluetooth that shows up, reset your Bluetooth name and reset factory. So all that good stuff there. And then uh, if we go into our telemetry, which is the first thing, you can see your throttle curve that's set in the app as well as your throttle um, percentage and your RPMs. Okay. So that's cool. Also shows your temperature of your ESC and your voltage. And then we can go to running. Running is going to give you your forward brake reverse, your forward brake, uh, or your forward reverse, which is crawl mode. We always want forward reverse on a crawler. There's our low voltage cutoff. Three volts, which is what we set in the app. Interesting, our BEC did not save. For some reason it says 7.5 volts. Don't know what that's about versus 7.4. Uh, our rotation direction is counterclockwise. Startup power, all that good stuff. Your max forward, max reverse. We'll go ahead and set our max reverse up to, uh, we usually like it around 75. Your max brake, drag brake, your FOC, all the settings that you're used to uh, in this app. Here's your calibration, which is something you kind of always want to do when you first get a truck. You hit calibrate. It's going to ask you to set zero speed, which means you basically make sure your throttle is completely centered. Say OK. And it's going to ask for set max speed, so you'll pull your trigger, have 100%. That's telling this where your endpoints are on your, your remote. And it's going to ask for max brake, which is full reverse. Say OK. Let go. Say yes. And you're good to go. Now, usually when you do that, I kind of like to have my truck set up off the ground or upside down just in case you calibrate it wrong. Uh, it doesn't shoot off the desk. We've seen people do that before. But now you're good to go with your uh, zero, your full throttle, and your full reverse. You can also set your neutral forward, which is basically how sensitive it, how sensitive it is uh, to when it starts to actually power the motor from your throttle. So if you look, I can give this throttle 10 or 10%, 15%. We're barely, are we moving? No, we're not moving yet. Almost 20. There we go. Now we're moving at 20% basically. And if you change that down, that basically gives you a little bit of dead zone in there for your forward, whoa, for your forward and your reverse. Okay, and if you change it, so that was 20% before we got any power to the motor. If we go to narrow, it's basically going to be like, five percent yeah like right around yep it's getting power at five percent i can i can hear it going so i like to set mine to narrow on a crawler just because i want it to be very sensitive i want to know when i'm giving it throttle it's going to start to go you can see it creep in there okay and then your punch on a crawler i always set punch all the way up punch is basically a delay between your trigger and the receiver or the throttle actually being pushed to the uh, motor, the power being pushed to the motor. So it's like a slight delay. Um, so basically if you have 100 or 10, your punch is all the way up to 10, it's instantaneous. You pull the trigger, it's gonna instantaneously give it that much throttle. Um, whereas if you have your punch turned down, it's basically gonna give you a slight bit of delay so that it's kind of lagged behind. That way it doesn't uh, give you full response immediately. It's uh, probably not something you'd use on a crawler, having your punch low. You always want your punch high on a crawler. That way it's immediate response. Uh, if you're doing a race car, though, you'll turn your punch down so, so sometimes you don't break loose when you give it full throttle and you didn't really mean to give it that much throttle or a little bit less. Um, 
you still kind of slam it on the, the throttle, it can kind of cause you to break loose or pop wheelies, stuff like that. So it gives you a little bit of a delay in it hitting whatever your end result is. I don't know if that makes sense, but maybe. Hopefully you guys understand that. And then our neutral brake and our low speed. On this guy, the low speed at 10 seems totally fine on the Cedar and this guy. On some of the Outrunners, you turn your low speed up a little bit more, so you have more low-end control. But these guys seem to have great low-end control and modulation. Then we have our throttle curve here, which you can set either in your remote, if your remote will do it, or in your ESC directly. We just like to leave it linear for now. And then uh, our battery settings, which are settings you can go through and mess with to adjust your voltage of your battery uh, and how it registers in the app, so your app knows. Okay. All right. So looks like we're at 100 and 110. It's not too hot yet. What's our drag brake at? I'm just kind of curious. If you find your motor getting super hot, your drag air yeah, drag brake set to 100. We're going to go ahead and set that to 75 here. Oh, no, that was our max brake. My bad. Drag brakes at 50. Yeah, which is probably fine. Well, that's quite a bit. Let's turn that guy down. Let's turn it all the way down to 20. It's still quite a bit. Turn it all the way down. All right. We'll slowly turn up our drag brake here. It's like at 11, it kind of kicks in a little extra. So we'll go to 11, because 10 isn't quite enough. Actually, 10's good. So we'll go to 10. I like that. And yeah, let's go ahead and um, I guess we'll put this body on here and go run it.
And there we have it, the Unity from FureTech 2-in-1 ESC motor combo. Uh, this thing, this hitch back here, guys, destroying me on every single line I tried to take. It just kept getting caught. Uh, if you go back and watch the video, you count how many times the hitch stopped me from moving forward. Such a pain in the butt. Uh, this rig is very heavy, though, so I, I kind of wanted to see how... Uh, the Unity did with a, a, a fairly heavy, I mean, it's not super heavy, but it's obviously got a lot of body weight and um, there's some added weight to it. So it's it's got some weight, but uh, definitely performed very well. The highest temperature we saw it get was around the 120, 125 mark. So we could put our finger on there um, and we didn't have to pull it off immediately or after three seconds. We were able to hold it there for longer than three seconds. That's kind of the rule. If you can hold your finger on there for longer than three seconds, you're probably fine. Uh, but 125, I think, was about the highest we saw, and um, and we we're kind of getting it in binds, and again, it's heavy, so uh, we expected it to get pretty warm, but not too, too bad, and um, everything else seemed to work just fine. Again, we ran it with the uh, Bluetooth or the repeater in there, even though they told us not to, uh, but it seemed fine. I didn't see any weird issues there, maybe temperature, maybe, I don't know whatever seemed fine but i wanted to be able to watch the temperature so um other than that pretty awesome pretty awesome setup i like that it's minimal um even though we do seemingly have a lot of wiring going on here it's only the three wires from the uh the motor and then the servo and some light wires going on there lights are kind of making it look messy too but overall cool setup Definitely one of those setups you want to pick up if you are looking for a two-in-one type ESC motor combo. And it's really cool that it's all waterproof and dustproof. Uh, I think I want to get one for the, one of the red cats as well. I don't know yet. I'm not sure. We've got we've only got two red cats, but if I get a third, um, we'll probably throw one of these in the third one. The other two already have brushless in them, so I don't know if I want to swap it over. I want to keep it in this guy for now. Um, it's kind of our trail rig, so I dig that. It kind of gets splashed and gets water and mud and stuff on it, so. Having it waterproof, dustproof, mudproof seems good. Thanks a ton to everybody that hung out and watched the whole video. Why don't you put down in the comments below um, the RC Unity because we're a you, the unit the community. I, I don't know what I was doing. I don't know where I'm going there, guys. That was that was bad. RC Unity. Just put Unity down in the comments below if you watched the whole video. Um, bring the unity <laughs> i guess i don't know whatever let me know you watched the whole video huge thanks to everybody that did watch and all of our channel members and subscribers um it's just a click for you to subscribe but it means the world to me and if you want to become a channel member that's the next level uh where you're able to see all the videos before they go public and uh, you get to see them without uh ads in front of them and so that's a huge benefit for some people. They, they don't want to watch the ads and they just want to help support the channel as well. They also get to see sometimes behind the scenes footage where I'll just do some, you know, random shots of what's going on behind the scenes and quick little videos and whatnot. So that's kind of fun sometimes. And then also they get extra entries into giveaways when we do do giveaways and we should have one coming up soon, but uh, it just helps support the channel. And it's a huge, huge benefit to us as well as to anybody that likes to support the channel. We get, they get priority comment replies as well. So you'd be the first to get replies to comments, especially as the channel grows and I can't reply to every comment. Channel members will always get replies. And uh, yeah, I appreciate it. We also have some swag, even though I'm not wearing my swag today, we do have some swag. Uh, so check that out if you wanna support in that way. We don't really make any money on it, but it does help support uh, showing the channel off to people and getting the word out there. Speaking of getting the word out there, make sure you guys share the video. Um, Sharing the video helps us a ton in any videos that we have that you think might help somebody else out, share the video, and then also like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. That way you know when new videos come up. We are gonna be getting the light adapter kit for the Traxxas here. Uh, so we'll probably show that just to kind of show off what it's about because it really sucks that the Traxxas light kits can't work on normal receivers. I don't know why you can't just power them and have the lights all on. Even if the lights were just always on, that'd be awesome. Uh, but they don't even turn on. They, they won't even turn on at all with with the power from the receiver. So I don't know. Anyway, this harness will be able to fix that. And yeah, if you guys got any questions about the Unity, why don't you go ahead and put them down in the comments below. Any questions about anything, you can always reach out to us on our Facebook. Uh, we also have a Discord. So if you're into Discord, definitely join the Discord. Uh, it's all mini RC stuff. So, you know, 
from bashers to crawlers to race cars to buggies to trail trucks, you name it. Uh, there's a bunch of people in there sharing their builds and talking about it. We also have a buy sell section where you can post stuff up for sale and all that. Uh, speak speak of the Discord. Speak of the Discord. Um, so yeah. Yeah, definitely check out the Discord if you are into that. You can download an app on your phone. You can do it on desktop, whatever. We have a link down in the description uh, to the Discord. And um, yeah, I guess that's all I got today, guys. Thanks to everybody again for watching. And uh, get out there and build something awesome. Build a car, build a course, build a community. Always important to do those things. And then smash it, crush it, and bash it. But don't break the expensive parts. Peace.